When it comes to setting up your ideal home office, a lot of factors come into play. Hello and welcome to the value space. By the end of this video, you'll be able to give your home office the ultimate fast lift. If that sounds like something you'd want to do, buckle up and let's go for the ride. Before anything comes to life, You'd have to have a rough idea of the final picture and this is where the budget comes in. This usually dictates everything from the paint color on your wall to the type of pencil you'll use. In saying that, you don't have to have the most expensive stuff to make your home office functional, cohesive and aesthetically pleasing. Which brings us to the next thing, coming up with your mood board. This is where all the ideas live before they come to life. When it comes to mood boards, a good place to start would be Pinterest, Instagram or TikTok. After a while, you'll notice a pattern in the kind of photos you pick. This is usually a clear indicator of what you gravitate towards. From there, you can pick the color scheme, materials and the layout of your home office. Alternatively, you can use a design app and individually add the pieces to your mood board. One of my favorite apps is Milano. I find it super easy to use when organizing my ideas and projects into visual boards. Disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Milanot, it's just my preference when it comes to creating mood boards. Hopefully, they'll sponsor some of my future videos. With the design process out of the way, laying the ink on your empty canvas now begins. By this point, you usually have an idea of your color scheme and this can be broken down into three. The best color, accent and textures. To put it simply, the best color would be the main color of your walls. In my case, I chose Natural White by Julux, which in my opinion is usually the safest and easiest to navigate around. When it comes to the accent color, you'd want to pick a wall where your attention is naturally drawn to. Case in point, when coming into my home office, your eyes are naturally drawn to the wall behind the monitor. Even though having a feature wall would always add an interesting design element, it's a lot easier going about it if you own the property, but if that's not the case, make sure it's permissible by your landlord before doing any changes. Alternatively, you can use a wallpaper of your choice. Finally, on color scheme, you want to make sure you know what materials and textures you want in your setup. In my case, I went with walnut wood, DIY black MDF in the form of this IKEA Alex drawers, which were originally white, some bronze accents, and lots of greenery which add the much needed visual interest. From there, you'd want to decide the primary function of your home office, which ultimately plays a big role in the overall layout. Using my office as an example, I wanted a place where I could write my scripts, shoot videos and edit with ease whilst being aesthetically pleasing. This layout works perfectly for me but I plan to add additional storage and a chill spot where I can kick back for a few minutes during my focus sprints. Moving on to the layout. When it comes to the layout, symmetry and balance are really important in making your home office a spectacle for the senses. Case in point, the desk area and the floating shelves are perfectly aligned with the industrial shelving unit on the left and the pegboard and floating shelves on the right providing balance to the main wall. Another way to make your home office look stunning is by invoking eye movement and this can be achieved by having things at different heights. To put it into perspective, have a few items lined up along the same line then introduce items with varying heights. Straight away, the introduction of different heights adds more intrigue to the eye as this automatically causes them to move around. Next up is functionality. You want to make sure everything in your home office has a purpose, but in reality, that's not always the case. Let me know in the comment section what item in your home office doesn't serve you a great deal. In my case, it would be this water fountain, but despite the fact that I don't turn it on as often as I should, it still acts as a nice decor piece. Other than that, everything else is functional, from my watch box, the floating shelves, and my desk setup, which I'll be taking a deep dive into in just a bit. This is where I spend 95% of my time when I'm in my home office. All my work is done here from coming up with video ideas, researching, writing the script, and finally editing. While on the subject of functionality, I might as well touch on the Super Ultra Wide, which has been an absolute productivity driver thanks to its screen real estate, which allows me to have up to six windows open at the same time. But my personal preference is three using an app called Magnet. For instance, when writing the script for this video, I had my research tab on the left, Microsoft Word in the middle, and an additional tab on the right for extra resources. By the way, if you haven't watched my review on it, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. 
Ergonomics is also an important aspect of functionality. In my case, my sit stand desk, the replica Eames chair, the Logitech MX Master 3 in tandem with the Carpio 2.0 are some of the key drivers on that front. If you'd like a deep dive into those items, I'll leave a link of my desk setup video in the description box for you to check out. Moving along, the next thing to have in mind is storage. This will help you avoid a lot of visual clutter and I have to admit this hasn't always been the case for my home office but after I did my home office makeover that completely changed. Link to the video is somewhere up there. For storage, I've got different areas where I store items in my home office, starting with the GrobeMed monitor riser which acts as storage for my M1 Mac Mini, 14 inch MacBook Pro and my GrobeMed desk tray. I've got additional storage on my desk setup in the form of IKEA Alex drawers on either side and I got drawer organizers in them to keep them neat and tidy. Still on additional storage, I've got IKEA floating shelves right above the monitor which hosts my collectibles, a few vintage cameras and a framed iPhone 5 from Grid Studios. To the right, I have a pegboard with pegboard bins and it hosts miscellaneous stuff like tripod mounts and screws. Right below that, I've got IKEA floating shelves which host some of my rugby trophies. My industrial shelving unit and IKEA floating shelf also host a few extra office items. Like mentioned before, with my creative needs increasing every other day, I plan to add extra storage and if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out when I post the video. Although not necessary, decor and aesthetics help give your home office that visual appeal. This is basically the colors, texture, shapes and overall visual balance of your home office. Studies have tied visual appeal with productivity in the sense that a more visually appealing setup has a higher likelihood to motivate you to do whatever task you have at hand. Case in point, when my setup was super cluttered, I rarely worked in my home office but after I did my home office makeover, 90% of the work I have done is in my home office. As for decor, they help add a personal touch and make you resonate with your space at higher frequencies. Some of the standard pieces in my home office are my vintage telephone which adds so much drama and character to the space through the different patterns and the bronze adds an interesting color pop. The levitating plant on the other hand adds that fascinating element to the setup and most of my friends never stop getting amazed when they come into my home office. On the flip side though, it can be a bit of a distraction at times as I just find myself staring at it nonetheless, its pros outweigh the cons. Moving on to lighting, when it comes to lighting, it is important to have a primary light source. In my case, the huge window to the left provides plenty of natural light, but when I want full control of my edits in post or just additional light on gloomy days, my Godox SL60W paired with a softbox come in clutch. When darkness falls, the different artificial lights in my home office come alive, starting with my carb floor lamp which lights up the right side of my desk. Having a monitor light is also important as this helps you reduce the glare on your eyes. BenQ Screen by Halo is a good one thanks to its asymmetric light pattern, but it sits at the premium budget end of the market at 250 Australian dollars. A cheaper alternative would be the Xiaomi MIBHR 4838GL coming in at only $73. I'll leave links to all the items in my home office in the description box. Adding accent lighting to help accentuate items displayed on a shelf or desk also adds an interesting design element. Lighting is also important when it comes to mood setting. Warm lighting helps make your home office feel cozy and relaxing, whereas RGB lighting would give more energetic vibes and this would be ideal for those whose home office doubles up as their gaming setup. Moving on to the next element. For your home office to remain functional and aesthetically pleasing, it all boils down to how organized and clean you are. Regardless of the tech, accessories and peripherals, cleaning and organizing your home office every couple of days will ensure it remains inviting for you to chip away on your dailies. Hope you find these tips helpful and by the way, feel free to tag me on Instagram, TikTok or Twitter so that I can check out your setups. I'll leave a link of my socials in the description box as well. Check out this video of my home office tour to see how I put those tips into play. People of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.